Thank you very much, and, and thank you, Alt City, for hosting us. All right, we've got three lightning talks for you guys today. Um, we're going to keep it short for this time. We're going to make this as a benchmark for future events. And uh, hopefully this will be interesting for this talk and for the remaining, uh, uh, for the entire session. Okay. Uh, first off, we have Saeed, Waz Saeed Wazan. He's a fellow Vimmer, a uh, functional programming enthusiast, and a software developer at uh, Invigo, um, in that order. And he's going to talk to us today about Mini Kanran. Right. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you, Ahmed. Okay. Hi, okay, uh, so we're going to make this quick. Uh, how many of you have heard of relational programming or logic programming? Have you used uh, Prolog or, uh, oh, you've used Prolog, that's great, okay. So uh, basically relational programming is programming with relations. Now usually when we program, we program with functions and functions have this uh, property that they take an input and, uh, well, many inputs and they can give you one or more outputs, right? But relations don't do that. Relations, uh, they model things in a certain relationship and you can ask questions about what the thing is that you've modeled. And uh, if you've actually used SQL, um, you've done relational programming, but the relations are like data that you enter manually. But I'm going to show you how you can do relational programming as programming. Um, and the language that we're going to be talking about is called Minikanran. Minikanran is like, um, it's, uh, it's not really a programming language. It's a language that you embed in your own application or your own program. It's an embedded. Uh, uh, domain specific language if you want and that's cool because if you don't have mini canron you can just implement it very quickly that's the mini part by the way and uh, you can implement it re really quickly and start using it and uh, it'll give you logic programming in your application that's uh, it's great i mean and uh, th it's a very small language and so i'm not gonna even bother teaching it to you you're gonna pick it up as we go along so this is my first example, and I don't want you to focus on the parentheses or all that stuff. Uh, run star just runs the program. Q is the query. It's like, well, the answer to this program will be in the variable Q. And uh, this program is called appendo. And basically, it's a copy of append when you append two lists together. But the difference is the O means it's a relation. So anything like appendo, membro, those are relations. So here I'm saying, OK, I have a relation, appendo, between the lists 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the variable Q. Right? And what do you expect will be the output of this program? What will Q be in this case? Exactly, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. And because obviously when you append two lists, you get the appended list as a result. Like it's a function. Uh, exactly, yeah, no, we're, we're going to get to get that. So let's make uh, a few changes. So this time I'm going to put the Q uh, where the four, five, six was. And uh, so here I have the answer, the output, as you would say, you know, in functional programming or imperative programming. And you have one of the inputs is Q. So what do you expect Q to be in this case? Four, five, six. Four, five, six, there you go. <laughs> so what just happened here? We gave it uh, one input and one output. Instead of appending two lists together, it kind of subtracted a list out of a bigger list, right? That's cool, because when we wrote appendo, I'm not going to show you the implementation of appendo, but when I wrote it, I never said subtract lists. I just said, oh, these two lists are similar, you know, and they give you a third list if these conditions work out. So. Um, that's really cool. But what's even cooler is this more complicated program. Now, uh, so I need to t introduce some keywords. So fresh introduces variables. So I have fresh variables, x and y, right? And uh, that equal equal, we say uh, unify. So we're saying q unifies with x and y. So q is the answer. It's two answers. It's x and y. Right? But the cool thing about unify is like hyper pattern matching. You can say Q is X and Y, or you can ask, is Q and X and Y? And it's kind of the same thing. Uh, we'll get to that later, but for now, just Q is X and Y, right? So what am I doing here? I'm saying appendo X and Y gives me one, two, three, four, five, six. What's the answer to this program? What's, the, what's Q? All possibilities? Is that, is that even possible? It is possible, yes. Uh, you get, 
it starts generating answers. It says, okay, first answer, x is empty and y is 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. Second answer, x is only 1 and uh, y is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. <coughs> Sorry. So you, you have this generation of programs. So that's, that's very cool. I, I never meant to, for it to do that when I wrote the program, but it can do that because of the relational power of Minicamera. So that's uh, basically my code example. Why in the world would you want something like that? Um, there, there are many reasons. One of them is if you want to do constraint solving. If you, want to do, if you have like a big problem with many variables and you need to constrain them so that you can do what your program is meant to do. Like um, if you have uh, people with many schedules and you need to schedule a meeting and this guy is available on Tuesday and this guy is available on Monday, how do I constrain all this data and, and get a list of meeting dates that will work for everyone? Minicandron can do that. Cause you just say, oh, um, you know, X has Monday off and Y has Tuesday off. Figure it out, Minicandron, and it will actually start constraining variables and give you the right answer. That's, that's very cool. You can use it. Uh, uh, have any, has anyone written a program for iOS recently? If you use uh, storyboards or the UI layout thing, how does, uh, how does iOS figure out how to best lay out your stuff? It uses a constraint solver. And actually, you can implement Cassowary, which is the constraint solver for iOS, uh, in Minicandron if you have a lot of free time. Okay, so you can do that in uh, iOS. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought. So um, there are lots of other examples uh, where you would want to do logic programming. And I just want you to consider that next time you're writing a complicated thing and you're doing, oh, if uh, x greater than 0 0.5 and y is between 10 and uh, 23, then this should be the condition. Think about using uh, Minicandron to just d describe your problem in a logical, declarative way and have the computer figure out the answer for you. Can it solve uh, square rules? Um, well, we have a small problem with numbers. <laughs> um, uh, well, logical languages, like if you've used Prolog, you know, uh, like there's this is operator that just gives you numbers. Because when you're dealing with logical variables, the logical variables are kind of more abstract than numbers. So you need to constrain your domain. So you can say, oh, this program works for positive integers uh, between 1 and 20. And that could work. But there's lots of interesting research uh, in constraint logic programming uh, about making, making it actually do that stuff. And obviously, Cassowary and other constraint solvers, they do that because you, know, you get like pixel perfect snaps on your UI. So um, think about the mini canon. Think about logic programming. It's a different way of programming things, and uh, it could be very useful for you. Thank you very much. My name is Said al <laughs> All right, we have room for three minutes of questions. Anyone has any question? Three. Less units. What? Less units and the reverse. I'm sorry, uh, I, don't, I don't understand the question. Yes, what about them? Put the conditions and then you want to act on them. Yes, you, actually you can use uh, one interesting use of Minicandron. Some guy needed to generate uh, tests for his uh, interpreter. So his, interp his uh, Minicandron program started generating very big types. Like you have the type int, and you have the type int to int, which is a function. But you can have like very complicated types. So this guy implemented like a program to generate types and he gave them to his parser or his compiler. And he said he, saw he was able to test his compiler, if it could understand those complicated, valid types. Uh, Minicadre can do that. Any other question? Can you generate the program from the unit tests itself? There's another, that's an interesting thing. Uh, these two guys, I don't know if you've heard of them, Will Bird and Daniel Friedman. So they used Minicadre to write a program where uh, they have a relational evaluator or a relational interpreter, okay? And uh, it takes an input expression and gives you what it could evaluate to. So they, they asked Minicandron, give me an input expression that evaluates to itself. And Minicandron started generating coins. And then they asked it, OK, give me two programs. The first program uh, evaluates to the second program. And the second program evaluates to the first program. And you have mutually recursive coins. And that's just, they didn't have to write code. Minicandron generated programs for them that can do that. Forget you know, who cares? Relations, man. Are there any guidelines to creating mini 
your language needs to have functions, basically. Uh, um, there's a paper called uh, Microcanron uh, by Daniel Friedman and David Holman. I can't pronounce his name. <laughs> it's like 12 functions. You implement them. It gives you a very basic core of uh, a logical language. And you can add fancy stuff like fresh and run star and unify and all that on top of that to make it um, a full mini canon. But mini canon is really mini. Like It took me like an afternoon to fully implement it in scheme. What you saw there was scheme, by the way. Uh, Sorry? I was wondering why the benefits. Yeah. Uh, that was Scheme, but like there are implementations in PHP, uh, JavaScript, Haskell, uh, anything. Objective-C, you'll find an implementation of Minicandron. You can use it. Any uh, other questions? Yes. Uh, can we use it uh, to help the uh, multiple possibilities of one side of the spaces? Uh, if you're asking, can you, make, can you make it generate HTML trees? Yes, it can generate, like you can it's see. If you can express the relation in a mini canon program, it can be done. It can definitely generate HTML trees. That's, I mean, that's one of the things it's good at. But you have to be able to express the relation correctly. Like, you have to say that the header is above the footer, for example, or you know th that kind of constraint, constraining of your program. Anything? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sai. Thank you. Everyone.